Hello, welcome to Wednesday Serial. I'm talking about the new X-Men from the Ashes launch, which is a hard shift away from the whole Krakoan era, but they do acknowledge it. And it's really interesting to see this, actually, because Marvel's done eras, had things happen with characters, teams, yada, yada, yada. For the most part, we just kind of move on. There might be a light reference to something that just happened because it was like yesterday. And so they're moving forward. But across these books, they've made bones about Kirko, and some of it is carrying forward. This is one of the few times I've seen not just one, but several books kind of take something that happened and move it forward. And I think that's interesting. What's also notable about it is that it's Krakoa, but the end of it and how things fell out and the very ending of it more or less pushed aside and ignored. So it's Krakoa in its heyday that was important. How things fell apart, all that. Still oblique. Um, because there's some stuff that they left out in the From the Ashes era. And now we're here and we're not going to talk about that transition or necessarily what happened. So that's interesting. So I'm going to take you through my journey as I read through it. Um, first up was Phoenix with uh, Phillips, Morocco, and Carell. I don't know. This is interesting to me because normally when it's a Jean Grey solo or focus book or anything, I get bored. Either it's Jean Grey in very early years, and she's a Marvel female character, and I say that in, like, the 60s comics. A little rough to read. Stan Lee didn't write women well as a rule, especially when they were supposed to be the focus. Sometimes his romantic interests, he could do better. I think Mary Jane's probably one of the better <laughs> jobs he did. Jean Grey? No. Um, and so you carry forward to Claremont and then you get the Dark Phoenix saga, obviously a big deal, but then you carry forward and for decades, Jean Grey kind of had the same story over and over again, where it's either untangling some continuity mess around her and she's being reborn, literally, figuratively, whatever, or she's doing some penance for what she did as Dark Phoenix. This plays into that with her trying to be a galactic hero and saving lives and dealing with the fact that as the Phoenix, because most intergalactic people don't know what X-Men is, which is, it makes sense on its face and it's actually kind of cool because normally Marvel stuff would go the other way. Oh, you're Cyclops of the X-Men, your tales are known across the galaxy. So we as readers don't have to figure out what they do know. Here, the aliens know the Phoenix Force, they don't know Jean Grey. And there's a narrator kind of going around this. And that's interesting. And it's playing it forward. And we're seeing Phoenix do these incredible feats. Uh, characters like no Nova are it on. He has cool stuff, but she's like dealing with a black hole or, or dealing with these cosmic natural events instead of responding to them, like, averting them, solving them. And that's, it, it's an interesting hook. I don't know if you can carry that forward all the way, and I don't think the book's trying to. It's a, it's a lot to get from a first issue, but this is a first issue of a new angle with a character being written a certain way. And I'm curious to see where this goes. I This is a book that I picked up on a lark because it was on discount when I ordered. And I'm intrigued. I'm not completely sold. And I don't think that's the book's fault. I think that's years of Marvel conditioning me that they can do a good first issue and then drop off pretty fast. But um, that doesn't mean this book will. And I'm curious to see where it goes. But I do want to note, um, there was this whole controversy around these damn things. The QR codes. I guess you could scan it. Don't. Um, you can go find the pages by typing in, like, Phoenix QR page. Um, there's a whole hubbubaloo about these. I was part of the hubbubaloo. 
because essentially they have a page there and they put up a code. Uh, there were these extra pages they put on. The idea was that they were extra pages supposed to be in light of like at the end of a Marvel movie, they have that extra scene. What is otherwise known as C plot in comics up to this point. Now, this isn't a movie, this is a comic. These were bigger comics, they were more expensive. A lot of the pushback that Marvel gave, the voices from Marvel gave, was you already got the pages you paid for. This was a bonus page to try to entice you to set up something to be more curious. I and a bunch of others had different ways of phrasing it, but essentially my argument was this. That is a C-plot. That is part of the comic ongoing and forever. As I own this issue, that page isn't there. If that page is ever taken down digitally or anything, it's gone. I care less about that. I care more about the fact that the page isn't in my collection that I'm paying for. And also, I have to do this whole awkward thing to read it. And they wanted you to read it on a phone. It re it, apparently, reading it on the phone was, A, the QR codes didn't always work. And B, uh, not a great experience. They didn't let you like zoom in very well or something on the page, which is weird but i assume they did that so it'd be harder to copy and whatnot but of course people are going to copy a digital page anyways this is also supposedly a way for them to fight piracy when in fact they're only helping piracy because reading this comic digitally is going to be better but on the official digital versions they still had this qr thing and so you had to move through and it's just awkward and terrible which means the pirated versions are just going to put this page at the end which makes it a better, cleaner experience, especially for that page in particular. Um, it was a gimmick, I guess, but it, more so than a gimmick, it was ripping a, a page out of the comic, whether or not it's the last page of the comic or a bonus page, whatever. It's part of the series. They said it's going to be included in trades and it's going to be included in reprints of the issue. Fuck off. Just put the comic in the comic you know, they've done other gimmicks and I've rolled my eyes or whatever, but it's not a big deal. I found the point, whatever, annoying, and I called it out saying, like, look, I just want to put my collection away and this lets me do it. But, like, why are you making it more difficult? Though the point or minus ones weren't as bad as some other weird things that they've done. I don't know. I don't like it. For the Phoenix page, and all the QR pages in particular, too, it's funny because for the most part, they echo what the last page or two of the comic is, where they're establishing a character or thing outside of the main story of the comic for the continuation, or whatever. So a looming threat, uh, a notification of something going wrong somewhere, you know, that sort of scene. These are serialized stories, and these are extra scenes and in, in initial story to help launch and create intrigue for what's going to come. So yeah, very much part of the story. Very annoying. Um, next was NYX, another one that I was kind of taking a bite on and wasn't so intrigued by. This is, the primary character was uh, Miss Marvel, um, but she's with one of the cuckoos and there's going to be a whole thing there, but they're playing on that. Um, there's the ancillary characters. I'm sure Laura's Wolverine will be a bigger point, but they wanted to build some of the intrigue. The idea is they're at New York at a New York college and they're in this mutant lessons class. Kamala is um, attending, but trying to be on the up and up. A lot of these characters are more on the fringe, but they're in New York City dealing with this. And so NYX, which is a more clever play with the title than what it was originally. And the title's there, but it has not very little, at least so far, to deal with that old series, which, uh, let's just say, as it's aged, has gained more negative reputation than more gained positive reputation. As far as I understand, I was never a huge fan of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. This one is kind of on its face interesting. I'm curious to see where it goes. This one could fall off very quickly or become more interesting very quickly, especially because it has more chance to interact with Marvel at large. Um, but it puts these mutants in a very different place where they're in the legacy of the X-Men tradition, but they are 
kind of more teens and kind of what X-Men was kind of supposed to be about these teens growing up, dealing with being persecuted for who they are and whatnot in a setting where some of that can be a lot softer. It doesn't have to be people trying to kill them every five minutes. It could be people snubbing them in class or talking about things. I think that has a lot of potential and I hope that they play this lighter so it actually has more social relevance it is actually more of a story that's interesting talking about how people deal with each other than just going for high drama all the time and just um high death and everything especially in light of what most marvel books would be it would really help set it apart in that sense x-force is here um most of this issue is dealing with a uh, threat to what's going around and forge has brought in deadpool for this story only to have a way to deal with the threat at hand but the idea behind this x-force is that forge invents things but what he's invented this time is a group to solve a problem that's happening in the world and we don't get the full throw of that yet it's going to be built up as we go um it's a hook it's it sounds intriguing on paper but when you, i feel like the more i thought about it, i'm kind of like okay so uh, without putting a little more on it it doesn't really feel like much of anything like forge is leading this x force he has a larger stake at mind and we're gonna get there but i don't know the issue for the most part was handled pretty well i'm curious to see where it goes but there's so much dealing with deadpool not technically being on the team but being around in this and then them giving him screen time if you will page time because this is the only issue he's gonna be in it just kind of felt like a false start for a first issue but it was interesting um curious to see where it goes and then i think i don't know with x-men i don't know what's supposed to be like the head main book like if you're gonna pick one book this is it i don't know if it's this or uncanny anymore but we have this mckay stegman x-men run where this group of x-men which includes juggernaut and they're making big bones about being mutants not ne necessarily just a group that's primarily mutants so that feels weird um but they're in this community where a sentinel factory used to be and they're saving the town dealing with things um and they're integrating with the community so a representative of the police comes by to kind of talk to them and whatnot and they have out and they talk about other members of the community I think that's really interesting. I think it's a good hook. What's weird, though, is the way Stegman draws. Everyone looks and feels younger than they actually are, even including Magneto, who doesn't look young per se, but looks younger than I think he's intended to look because he's supposed to be somewhat confined to a chair right now and haggard. and He looks like a guy in a chair. I don't know. Um... I think Stegman's a bad choice for this book. And I say that I love a lot of Stegman's art. I think this book looks cool, but I think it's robbing the story of some of its gravitas and would have been better put on another book, which would have been most any Marvel book that's much more action focused. Whereas this is actually trying to have some communal depth and whatnot i'm actually really interested to see where this goes i think mckay's building something i'm a little wary because with mckay's past roster of books i don't necessarily love his writing a lot of the time but this really hooked me um i'm really interested to see where this goes the final page of this book was not c plot it was b plot and that that qr code page i mean was literally a page ripped out of the book more so than the rest um that's going to have consequences moving forward and the fact it's not in the book really bugged me that time um but i, I i'm curious i i think this was a good setup and, and clearly there's legs I, i'm curious to see where it goes i'm also curious to see that as we build how these books are going to play off of each other and in some ways i'm kind of excited because for the most part i think they're mostly well separated 
And I would love if they just let that be. Because how it's been for a long time is there'd be various X books. And then they'd have some event every year or two and mash them all together. And then all the books had to kind of stop what they're doing, deal with this thing and move on, which isn't inherently bad. It can be good to throw a wrench in the works, and it can be good to force these characters to interact. It's fun. I get it. But what ended up happening was because it was every year and because most stories are regulated to really six issues, sometimes four, it would be a wrench in the middle of the story, and we'd have to get back to it, but we'd have to acknowledge what happened. And it just it didn't work because things were moving too slow to have this giant wrench in which took out three months and then we're trying to get to the next one felt like we unwound we're starting a new story getting support and then the next one would hit and it just no don't let it be much more rare um i'm really really hoping that they have the restraint to let these books play out for a good while and the truth is that's gonna have to be like three years because these comics Wow. And what's nice, though, is um, I had a conversation recently with some people on Twitter talking about the relative pace of the ultimate line, which our books I'll hopefully talk about soon, see if I make another video. Um, in particular, Ultimate X-Men, which fix for this, I guess, but just happens to be here. I was pointing to being slow. Someone was pointing to, well, these things are happening. I'm like, yeah, they're establishing the threat, but they're getting to like what the powers are they say well they're winding up to the deeper whatever of this that that should have been first issue like that next revelation should have been first issue um but we're at issue five like it's crawling not much happens there are not many words in an issue of the current ultimate x-men comparatively these books are doing a lot more like each one of these issues was an issue and there was an episodic bit dealt with and then some build and a little bit of extra stuff and that's great but these were all five dollar issues um oh, i guess except for expert which is six and These are supposed to be bigger. We need that level of issue basically every time for things to move forward faster. And that's part of where I've been getting. And I've had mixed feelings on this because like if you go back and read old Marvel, yeah, things used to move at a breakneck pace. But the truth is, most of the time, a lot of the issues were just issues. They were just kind of disposable hit or miss, which works for a lot of things. And I think we could use a bit more of that. But also then you get to, say, early 2000s, you have that full decompression, the Bendis mode, you know. And like I was saying, six issues and go and go and go, and you're barely telling any stories in a year, and then there's the events. and Way too slow. I think there's a lot of room for two, three issue, you know, stories, move it up. Let B plots be plots. Let C plots be C plots and let things build and go and have the big payoff and then move to the next. But I really, really think with how comics are now and whatnot, they need to pick up the pace, tell more stories faster and not try to milk stories for more pages or whatever. Let a little more be assumed, put more on a page, have at least six panels a page put more words in each panel move move this stuff doesn't have to be so slow because i think it's really killing the ability for these things to grow and let these moments like this moment with the phoenix if we only really get like three four stories with it which would take years at the pace comics have been for the longest time it doesn't feel like much but if we can get more in, then it's going to feel more like the foundational stuff at Marvel that made all these characters popular and interesting in the first place because we will have explored, you know, if they're on this kind of alien planet, if they deal with this moral choice, if they're butted up against this character, if we're just having a fun team up over here. Like, one, two issues, boom, 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 let's go. And I honestly think 
that is why because i've been trying to figure this out dan slot is a writer that makes a lot of people angry but also has garnered a lot of fans but a lot of the fans tend to be more silent it's it's more told through sales than through comments and i think a big reason why is for the longest period in dan slot's career he had a lot more of these shorter tales and part of it was because he was primarily on amazing and they do two to three issues a month so i think in his mind was like this month we're going to do this story this month we're going to do this story we're going to take a few pages build up this we're going to take a few pages build up that and then we'll get there and then we do da 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 and having that ability and then having those things where suddenly it's six issues but then those six issues that's a big deal and that story covers a lot of ground and then we go and we do that it's just what i'm saying and, and that allows it to build now other aspects of dance slot obviously anger people but i i think you need to run that hot cold temperament with fans to, and tell more and risk more and do more to get anywhere because right now um I mean, especially with X-Men, after Krakoa, fan reception's already mixed. A lot of things are pretty placid, and it feels kind of like a return to a status quo. For what? And I still kind of agree with that. I still think there's something to be here, and I get why Krakoa had to end. But I think because they did such a bad job bunding it, it's going to be a sore point for a long time. I'm curious to see how it goes, but I also am aware that all these books read differently than all the other Marvel books because of that at this point. So, I don't know. It's interesting, exciting. There's still more books with issue ones coming out that I'll see. And I'm excited for it for the most part. There's still a couple books that I'm not sold on, but I haven't read anything yet. So we'll see. Cheers. Peace. Catch you soon.